क्लास टेंथ चैप्टर सिक्सटीन मैनेजमेंट ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज लेट एस सी वट आर नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज रिसोर्स दैट वी गेट फ्राम आर नेचर लाइक फॉरेस्ट वाइल्ड लाइफ वाटर कोल एक्सेट्रा आर कॉल्ड नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज नाउ वट इज सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट यूटिलाइजिंग रिसोर्सेज इन सच अ वे दैट एनवायरमेंट इज नॉट हार्म एंड इनफ इज लेफ्ट फॉर द कमिंग जनरेशन दैट इज वट वी कॉल एज सस्टेनेबल रिसोर्सेज सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट नाउ एज पर द बुक देर आर देर इज अक्टिविटी लाइक फाइंड आउट द इंटरनेशनल नॉर्म्स टू रेगुलेट द एमिशन ऑफ कार्बन सी कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड तो वट आर द इंटरनेशनल नॉर्म्स इंटरनेशनल नॉर्म्स टू रेगुलेट सी ओ टू एमिशन देर वॉज इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू अटो which was a, which aimed at reducing emissions to a level where they would ma- not maliciously affect the emission um, affect the affect emission this we measure as carbon footprints and it is the total emission caused by an individual event by an organization or product expresses co2 equivalence in, and in 1995 there was a uh, ganga action plan to reduce pollution in ganga so it was a multi crore project that came up in uh, 1985 and uh, let us see ki what exactly happened in ganga what was the problem with the uh, river ganga you know uh, moves down the mountain at arishikesh and from there it moves to haridwar uh, narora kannauj and then to allahabad varanasi and uh, bihar patna baksar these places finally before meeting the sea now as we can see from the graph in ncert that the uh, river is polluted in uh, almost by the time it is reaching kanpur it is highly polluted and the next city is receiving water from the same river and it is again uh, adding all the effluents in the river so, and this key the process keeps on repeated and this destroys the quality of water and the city that is taking up water in the Uh, next will be having problems now what was uh, uh, ganga action plan that there will be establishment of uh, sewage treatment plants so before the effluents being thrown out into the river there has to be a stp or effluent treatment plant etp that has to be established so that so that the river is not receiving the polluted water or the pollution level should in the river should be decrease then there are some indicators also pollution indicators suppose how do we know ki uh, water is polluted or not so the first thing is ph if the ph of the water should be neutral and the next thing should is the presence of e coli you know there is a, a bacteria called escherichia coli and if it is present in water in the drinking water it means contamination by sewage so this is how we can make out in fact there are other like worms there's a tube effects worm that we can that we can even if you see that we can make out that it is water is polluted go for sustainable development what we need to do is there are three r's reduce recycle and reuse let us see what we can reduce what we can recycle and what we can reuse so we can classify things like we can recycle paper plastic plastic bottles metal items and we can reuse the glass jar metal items clothes etc why we need to have this 3 hours why the, why we need to reduce recycle and reuse there are few few points for this it will make our life easier and raise the standard of living if we manage our resources with long term perspectives life of coming generations will also be easier and comfortable and the third thing is for the sustainable development these should be equitable there has to be equitable distribution of resources and environment will be safer unequal natural resource de- uh, distribution and people who are technologically more advanced utilize more resources thus producing more waste polluting the environment so there has to be sustainable development forest and wildlife the next resource now uh, there are some biodiversity hotspots what is biodiversity biodiversity means variations and hot spots means number of species and endemic species rich areas for example the northeast himalayas and kerala 
if there are more uh, the area is more biodiversified and has more of endemic species that area will be more more uh, having more number of species and this is what we say is a hot spot how can biodiversity help us loss of biodiversity leads to ecological instability and you know our all resources they are coming from nature only most of the resources what are the various needs fulfilled by forest for uh, for the following for suppose local people firewood fuel timber bamboo roof for herds baskets hunting implements fishing nets food grazing animals etc for industrialist timber paper commercial purpose com- com- commercial things like rubber banana teak eucalyptus etc who local people or an industrialist cause major loss to the biodiversity and how it is the industrialist who ruthlessly exploit the forest they cut forest for their selfish needs and grow crops for commercial purpose this leads to monoculturing thus destroying biodiversity monoculturing is growing one crop only that reduces biodiversity like anything how the local peoples are affected by monoculturing the very needs of local people like leaves for fodder herbs for medicine fruits and nuts for food can no longer be met for from monoculturing because it's single crop being grown now what are the forest based industries are they sustainable in long run no with the fast pace with which forests are being destroyed will not lead to sustainable sustainable development running of forest based industries but if the raw material is used judiciously and not wasted and more trees are planted yes this will lead to sustainable development give examples of local people working traditionally for conserving forests and wildlife uh, bishnoi community in rajasthan the samrita devi bishnoi along with 363 people oppose the felling of kejri tree in kejriwal village of rajasthan near jodhpur and another is the chipko movement hug the trees movement in reni village garhwal himalayas they fought with a contractor and not let, let the trees cut let's give examples where government along with local people helped in managing a forest in a better way than they than any one of them if the in the great himalayan national park which contain alpine meadows which were grazed by sheep of nomads in summer when the parks were formed uh, government put an end to this practice but it was seen that without regular grazing the sheep of the sheep the grass fast grow first grows very tall and then falls over preventing fresh growth and the second instance is of the aravari forest range of bidnapur district where the villagers were not allowed in the forest it was very difficult by the government to take care of the sal forest but when local villagers were involved and given employment the forest recovery was remarkable suggesting that the local people together with the government should manage a forest this is called joint forest and what is the damage caused to forest by building rest houses for tourists in national parks pollution by plastic bags packaged food items cans plastic bottles etc hunting and poaching of animals and destruction in the destroying the park parks Tur- uh, tourists are a source of income to the government and awareness is created grazing domestic animals in national park grass grows and spreads faster when continuously grazed if it is exploited may cause soil erosion tourists throwing plastic bottles covers and other litter in the national park it causes pollution and thus harms the ecosystem why should we conserve forests and wildlife we get timber food nuts fiber medicine etc from the forest wildlife is a tourist attraction forest and wildlife help in ecological stability disturbance created by killing any one species will harm the whole food chain food web and thus the ecosystem suggest some approaches towards the conservation of forests stop cutting trees avoid deforestation afforestation growing more and more trees avoid monoculturing go for alternative ways to fulfill needs support supported by trees like minimizing use of waste of paper recycling used paper recycling the used paper 
involving local peoples along with, uh, people along with the government agency taking care of the forests and why water shortage occurs in India. Most of water in India is received by monsoon and uh, that too in few months of the year. Underground water is uh, scarce and polluted, loss of vegetation cover, diversion for high water demanding crops are other reasons. Water is lost as it moves into sea rather than being utilized. What are the problems incurred by local people when a dam is being constructed? There is a displacement of large number of people, deforestation, loss of biological diversity, floods may result in the surrounding areas. Why we need dams to ensure that water for drinking and irrigation throughout year to generate hydroelectricity, to distribute water equi equitably. What is water harvesting? These are the scientific ways to conserve rainwater. Give some traditional ways to conserve and harvest water. Khadin tanks and nadis in Rajasthan, Bhandaras, Bandaras and Tals in Maharashtra, Bundis in MP and UP, Ahars and Pines in Bihar, Kuls in HP, Ponds in the Kandi belt of Jammu and Eris tanks in Tamil Nadu, Surangam in Kerala and Kattas in Karnataka. What is watershed management? Scientific emphasis to conserve water in order to increase the biomass production, that is increasing primary resources to produce secondary by minimizing ecological balance. Why we need to emphasize on watershed management? To maximize production and income, to mitigate droughts and floods, to increase life of the downstream dam and reservoir. Explain the Khadin system with a diagram. There is a catchment area, there is a Khadin or cropped area, then there is a boom, a saline water and finally a shallow dig well. Dug well. Khadins was the water harvesting system used traditionally in Rajasthan. In uneven terrains, water was made to leach down by making few Khadin booms in between the catchment area and the boon cropping was done. Beyond the boon, a shallow well was dug to collect overflowed water. What are the advantages of water stored underground than on the surface or a tank or a lake? First is that it does not evaporate but spreads out to recharge wells and provide moisture for vegetation over a wide area. It does not provide breeding grounds for mosquitoes like stagnant water collected in ponds and lakes and there is a least chance of contamination by humans and other 